I have the honor of introducing our first scholar today, Aletha Chapone. Aletha is a doctoral candidate in the Department of Health Promotion at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Her graduate assistantship is at the Gretchen Swanson Center for Nutrition. She will graduate in December with her doctorate. Her mentor is Dr. Brandon Grimm, who I believe is with us today as well. The project that she will talk about today is titled The Development of a Mobile App to Measure the Adoption and Implementation of Healthy Eating and Active Living Policies and Practices in Family Child Care Homes. Aletha, the floor is all yours. Okay, great. Let me share my screen. Okay. Are we good? Great. As, I'm, as I just mentioned, this project involves the development of a mobile app to measure healthy eating and active living policies and practices in family child care homes. And today I will give you, that's good, next screen. That's good, okay, great. Just double check and make sure it's working. And today we're gonna have an overview, of just a brief overview of the description of the research and then methods, preliminary results, and then some display of the app front end and back end, and what are the next steps for this project. And as a reminder, we Healthy conduct- Healthy and active living interventions have demonstrated oh, success no. in promoting best practices and policies. I apologize for that. I don't I not want know what happened. So as a reminder, we conducted a pilot study that utilized a modified photo voice approach to capture healthy eating and active living policies and practices in family child care homes in which i will refer to as fccs in this presentation and fccs homes are a subset of early care and education programs in which providers care for children in their own homes rather than a commercial facility and so thus no two homes are exactly the same and variability exists across these programs which may not be captured by existing measurement tools that are currently used in these programs. And based on the results from the pilot study, this project aims to develop a mobile app to execute data collection method that uses photos to examine healthy eating and active living policies and practices in these settings. Next. Okay, I just want to introduce our partners, and our partners are the Children's Hospital and Medical Center and the University of Nebraska Lincoln, their undergraduate senior design lab. And we partnered with Children's Hospital and Medical Center as our liaison and really working with them as also experts on FCC providers who participated in the Nebraska Go Knapsack program, which is a healthy eating and active living based intervention. We also partnered with the University of Nebraska Lincoln, their undergraduate senior design lab, and this consisted of a group of seniors, academic mentors, and private sector mentors. And they served as our app developers while also providing the students an opportunity to build their skills. And the picture on the right includes an award from the senior design lab. We are also the earliest group in the senior design lab history of the entire program to publish an app to the app store. And typically these apps get published later on in the summer. And I'm just gonna provide you a brief reintroduction of the methods that we used. So as a reminder, we use the information systems research framework, and this originates from design science research. So it's a little bit out of the realm of the public health world, and it includes three in it, but it has been used in the public health landscape. It includes three iterative cycles, and these are the rigor, relevance, and design cycles. And this framework was selected because it bridges the gap between scientific rigor and, and user experience, which is often missing in the public health landscape when we're looking at apps and utilization of technology. And in the relevant cycle, we conducted semi-structured interviews with FCC providers regarding factors that impact the promotion of healthy eating and active living policies and practices, as well as their perceptions and use of technology. And providers were Nebraska-based, and they had previously participated in the GoNapsack pro program. We conducted 19 interviews until we reached theor thematic saturation, um, and that resulted in 19 interviews. 
And this presents results from those interviews. And we conducted a thematic analysis. We utilized two independent coders. And this resulted in nine themes that impact the promotion of healthy eating, active living policies and practices, also known as HEAL. And these themes, along with the rigor cycle, which I will describe next, were used to develop the requested picture categories. Providers and providers also shared their opinions and views about mobile technology, which influenced more of the design of our app and also the number of picture categories we included. And in the rigor cycle, that had several components. We first reviewed results from the pilot study that we conducted prior to this, and that mainly impacted the layout of the app. Next, we also coded and reviewed healthy eating, active living policies and practices, and we used independent coders to code items of the knapsack for FCC um, measurement instrument to determine whether an item could feasibly be observed via fo a photo. We thematically grouped that, which resulted in seven picture categories, which, we, which will be presented on the following slide. And the review of photo voice, photo voice literature that we conducted also provided insight on how the app can be thoughtfully used within a heel based intervention itself. This, the table represents some of the initial photo categories and then updated photo categories based on our methods. So the design cycle of our, of this project includes user testing with the research team and FCC providers, iterative discussions with various members of the research team, as well as children's hospital resulted in changes of the photo categories represented in the table above. And please keep in mind, these aren't the final ones yet either. In the next, in the next phase, user testing with S FCC providers will occur. And originally we had intended to do user testing with FCC providers throughout the academic year. However, the mobile app wasn't available for beta testing until May. In other words, it wasn't published to the app store. Instead, a partial working version of the app was available within a development app. And this caused a great deal of confusion when we did testing with the research team. And thus we decided to hold off on testing with FCC providers until the app was actually published in the app store just to really make things seamless for the for our participants and we also wanted to make sure that bugs and issues were fixed so we had an issue with creating user accounts in the past few weeks and that got fixed yesterday and we plan to start doing user testing starting Monday and this will include FCC providers using the app submitting the photos and then taking a short survey and a follow-up interview regarding their experience using it and also regarding their responses to the app. And now the app itself, which I'm excited to show you. And please keep in mind, this is our beta testing version app. So we have our app icon, um, which was designed by a very talented person. I love it. And our login page, we have a login so that we can that I can control who uses the app and who doesn't, so it's not available to the um, public. The next slide featuring my dog, but um, Gus, <laughs> is the slide of the categories. So initially users will select a picture category and they will be taken to this middle slide to take a picture or upload a picture of the requested category. So this one I've selected is indoor physical, indoor activity space. Um, that's my dog on my yoga mat. And then next they have the option to say they want that, want to use that photo, or if they press the X, they can go back. The following slides are, then they have the option to briefly describe their photo and really hone in on like what's important to them. And then they can click submit. And then they also have the option to go back and undo what they did and edit, et cetera, take new pictures. And then the back end, which actually is what took the longest in the app development, interestingly, and is extremely important in developing mobile apps for the use of public health because it really streamlines the way that your data is exported um, and takes a great deal of consideration. We have the ability to change the categories ourselves even after we're done with the app students. So that does hold promise in the future if we want to 
use this method in another setting or another topic area, which is exciting. Then we also have the option of sorting the categories, sorting the photos by category and by the, the name of the program itself. And then the following backend page is that we can dump the images to a zip file. Um, we're using Firebase as our backend software, which is free up to a certain amount of users. So it's something that is sustainable within Go Knapsack programs if it's used in FCC programs. And we also have the option to create multiple users and have about up to 200 users at one time using this for free. And what are the next steps? Next steps are user testing with FCC providers, developing the analysis tool based on the photos that they submit to me throughout the next few weeks. And then we're really gonna focus on feasibility testing and we're gonna focus on aspects of practicality and, and adoption within these heel based interventions. So our partners at Children's Hospital are really eager to use, the Go, use this within the Go Knapsack program. And we're eager to determine its practicality and adoption in the Knapsack program across the United States after that. And several acknowledgements I would like to acknowledge um, the Buffett Early Childhood Institute for the interest in the project, as well as the funding to make it possible, as well as my doctoral committee and my group of UNL undergraduate students. They were amazing and published the app quicker than it anybody has ever published an app in that history before, as well as Children's Hospital for their continued support in this project and their excitement about using it moving forward in the program. I have a list of questions and just after this, if this is where it's available, if anybody's interested in looking at it, I would have to create you a user account though because it's not open to the public. Thank you so much, Aletha. So interesting. I'm going to open up the floor for questions for Aletha. Um, I bet there's a lot because this is a super interesting technology. Um, questions? Um, I have a question for you, Aletha. I know just a little bit about the uh, NAPSAC program, but can you give me an example of like one of the, I guess, one of the criteria that they use for Knapsack that your photos could be tied to. I don't know enough detail about Knapsack to, to see the direct connection there. Yes, and in direct photos, for example, in the, nap the Knapsack asks about breastfeeding and breastfeeding best practices. And this is just one example of a topic area. There's five uh, topic areas in the knapsack and there's several items on breastfeeding space and promotion. And of those, breastfeeding space within somebody's home is something that can be observable via a photo. And also it's something that not all FCC providers necessarily have the space for the room for a lot of times they have to move around furniture they have to create something it's all really dependent on what their space looks like and in, in, in the application of this a uh, provider would could take a photo of what space they have available for breastfeeding and the app could be used as a way to look at it and and look at what best practices it might meet as well as provide recommendations on how to like how to make space for it and improve it so that FCC providers can, can follow through on those best practices. Okay, thank you. That's a really interesting example. I love that. Thank you. So I had a couple of questions, but one, would you include students growing their own food with their teachers as an example of healthy eating and promotion? And then the other thing is, um, how do you think COVID, if this extended time period, would impact your study and the and eating healthy food at this point in time? Sure. In terms of growing your own food, in our pilot study, we actually had a lot of providers submit photos of their garden itself and indicated that that was something that 
did teach the children about healthy eating and active living best practices. And it was found to be some essentially an item that promoted child nutrition in general. In terms of COVID, I think this app is especially important right now. In these programs, technical assistance is provided. And oftentimes we know that technical assistance that is more tailored to a program versus handing out resources, such as here's a one sheet, here's this, here's that. FCC providers really need that tailored information and feedback, one-on-one -on -one feedback. So this is essentially a, a tool that could, not saying negate on-site visits because on-site visits are incredibly important, but in COVID times, people might not necessarily want a person coming into their home or it's not necessarily appropriate um, or irresponsible to have somebody coming into your home. And this is a way to share, this is what my space looks like. Okay, what can we do with this space to really provide like more physical activity area? Let's move this couch over here. Let's take this out here. Let's there's a lot of different things that could be provided to essentially provide a very tailored experience for these providers and a one-on-one -on -one experience as well.